Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Hearthstone World Champion. Edelweiss, Lorinda, and Dragon Rider, uh, aka Dawn. We're going to give you some uh, pre finals analysis as Pocket Train gets the like, semifinal. Going to give him uh, a little bit of a break to kind of refresh it up. Uh, but Edelweiss, me and Neil were obviously on, on the broadcast, but how are you feeling uh, coming into this, uh, this grand final? Well, it was nice to hear that at least Pocket was with me, that Rekfam was sort of the number two, right? That if we weren't going to go for the, the clear protagonist of Pocket Train, that Rekfam was number two. So I feel good about that pick if it, if it didn't turn out in the end. Uh, it just seems like we've got protagonist energy coming from two directions with CJ yep. Streak. So uh, maybe leaning Pocket just because of that 3-0 earlier in the day and he feels pretty confident, but I don't know. CJ's feeling a little unstoppable right now. Yeah, and and Don, you were uh, on the bandwagon from the get-go, one of the forecasters to originally pick Pocket Train to win. After seeing this play out, seeing CJ's run thus far, and feeling unstoppable today, are you still confident uh, in your pick with uh, Pocket Train taking it in the grand final? Look, I can't bet against the pocket. All right, we, we got to stick with it. Uh, I, I was a little nervous, I'll, I'll be honest, in that last match, though, when I saw it was one and one. I went, oh, no. I just, and, and I'm going to come on record and say it, I kind of called you guys out in our Discord and was like, no, nope, we can't change the predictions. Okay, you made that bet. You're going to lay in it now. Uh, and I, I know it was I was getting a little nervous, like, oh no, now watch Pocket's gonna lose, and that's gonna be sad. <laughs> and I, I was gonna stick with it, uh, but yeah, I, I'm sticking with Pocket. Yeah, well, a lot of players I think are are on that mindset, uh, but we're gonna take a look at uh, some highlights uh, from these players from uh, throughout. big surprises over the course of the the tournament field in terms of like decks that overperformed based off of expectations or decks that underperformed based off expectations He had some, he had some great points. Notably, the priest and the druid. So well done here, Neil. He tries to figure that out. Uh, but Edelweiss, I'll, I guess I'll pose the same question to you. Uh, knowing what we know now with the results, you can feel free to be completely results oriented in your analysis here, uh, as is tradition <laughs> in Hearthstone. Yeah, absolutely. So in mean, terms of popularity and how they performed. I mean, this priest is the highest win rate deck. You know, not a large sample size because it was only brought in the two lineups, Meaty and Pocket, but it's gone five and one, uh, second only to Paladin, which has been banned 85% of the time, but then 80% win rate at four wins, one loss. So Priest really seems like the, the sort of meta breaker read that these players had. And uh, even though Rekfim wasn't able to move on, the warrior did pretty well for itself. Again, you know, small yep. sample size since it was the only warrior in the tournament. Uh, Demon Hunter, I think, was the biggest surprise for me seeing how poorly it has done because I really expected a lot more out of the Demon Hunter. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. Demon Hunter, it felt like like the, the very few amount of tech inclusions that you can include in the deck made a huge difference in a lot of the matchups. Um, but uh, definitely a weak point. Uh, but now, sort of looking forward uh, to this Grand Finals, um, you talked about it a little bit, Dawn, but... Um, like, what does uh, CJ obviously lost 3 0 to Pocket Train uh, in one of their first matchups of the tournament? What does CJ need to do in order to win? Is it just repeat what he did with Meaty, which is capital? Um, is maybe Pocket Train not as favored on paper as everybody's been saying? Uh, yeah, it's it, it's going to be a combination of some of those, I think. The cues, depending on, on how that works, but. I think in a way that the uh, mindset 
is actually going to be something that's very important for these players as well. We saw in that last interview and we've seen in previous tournaments like that summer championship uh, with Pocket Train getting into the finals but only getting second, uh, that sometimes those nerves can get to him or he can kind of get inside of his own head and that potentially could be a hindrance for him. But on the other side, CJ has built up that momentum. He is on a roll. And I think that if he kind of capitalizes on that, feels good and continues to make those solid plays without, you know, overextending into the, the overconfidence side of things, uh, I think that's where we're going to see a difference in how uh, these players kind of react or uh, change their plays based on those draws or the decks that they get queued into. Yeah, and Neil, uh, I'm going to come to you again. This is a huge risk right now. Um, <laughs> sure is. I, I heard that. We'll see if the audience at home heard that. Sure is. Uh, but what do you think is the uh, the weak spot here for Pocket Train? Because also, uh, um, everybody's talking about Pocket Train obviously being the favorite. What's the weak spot? I mean, he said after he won the previous tournament that he was so relaxed because he knew he had qualified for Worlds. The person we just spoke to a moment ago was not a relaxed human being. Um, he's very nervous. And although he should still get it done, that's the weak spot. If he can't control those nerves you don't know how you're going to react when you put in those spots like you just don't you you're never there before you don't know how you're going to react you're playing for the world championship he could unrelax and cj will punish any mistakes that pocket makes we saw that yesterday is um from your perspective and advice does cj seem re relaxed it seems like more relaxed today than yesterday <laughs> would you agree yeah, I mean, when you've been, you know, through uh, the fire and, and come out the other side, like last night, just that marathon of a game, uh, the, the mental fortitude to not just rage quit after, you know, discarding your hand, shuffling into your deck, and, and, and then to come back and win, you know, that game, that series, and go, you know, 6-0 today... I think just really puts CJ in, in such a great position mentally. It'll just come down to, like Dawn was saying, whether or not it uh, goes to his head too much. But so far, I mean, I think CJ has just really shown an incredible fortitude uh, for, you know, even weathering bad beats and then coming through on the other side. Yeah, it's been uh, uh, really, because he's also had to play... Uh, another an additional match and longer matches. Pocket Train's matches have been lightning round, right? 3-0 to start yeah. things off. Very quick matches, fast deck, fast lineup. And uh, CJ a little bit quicker today because he's had 3-0s, but he's had some bangers of games, right? Looking back to the series against Requiem with the Highlander Druid versus Warrior. Um, and as far as speaking of, um, Don, you, are, you have been dubbed uh, the Highlander Druid uh, expert here right now um, Highlander Druid I have been incredibly Im impressed by it I thought we were going to see two of Dragon Druids dominate and obviously we have seen that because Pocket Train has in his, in his lineup but um, are you a are you a Highlander Druid gamer now after seeing uh, CJ just dominate with it thus far a forbidden fruit gamer even perhaps I Okay, I will say to my credit, I did theorycraft Highlander Druid that included Forbidden Fruit. I'm a fan of it. I love it. And I I do want to see that win. I'm glad it's been going there, but I I don't know. I the 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 thing here for me is those aggressive decks on the other side from Pocket Train. I mean, if uh if there's a kind of heavy hand if uh, CJ isn't able to find some of those uh, answers in the in that Highlander deck, it feels like it can get steamrolled a bit by those uh, pretty fast decks. Yeah, and that's where we've, that's where we've seen the big losses uh, for CJ. But I have faith. I have faith. But I feel like we've uh, done quite a bit of analysis on the decks, and we are actually going to go ahead and revisit our predictions uh, from the very start. Uh, of the broadcast. Um, uh, <laughs> yep, that's this is a hundred percent correct. Uh, little, Neil uh, did swap pick. position there. Yep, Neil did. Pick, um, and I uh, da, da. can't get away with anything these days. Uh, yes, I did pick Meaty. Uh, Edelweiss did pick Requiem. 
uh, who are now eliminated from the tournament. But I feel like we were justified, right? Uh, Edelweiss, Requiem, even Pocket Train said it. And if everybody else is picking Pocket Train and Pocket Train said it, that kind of counts as a Pocket Train pick, right? Yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> but notably, all the same play group. The only reason Requiem had different lists than Midi and Pocket is because of the way the group, groups lined up. So, uh, you know, they all have done incredibly well uh, to, to, to make it as far as they did. And uh, just, you know, we've been surprised by uh, CJ's seemingly comeback king here. Yeah. And uh, I won't even begin to justify the meaty pick outside of saying it could have been pocket being eliminated with the tough draws against CJ uh, early on in the tournament. Same exact lineup. And uh, I don't want to say similar results, but that's it. But um, those are those were our predictions. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Edelweiss, uh, Lorinda, and uh, Dawn for providing analysis in this break. Uh, we are there. We are uh, We have Pocket Train versus CJ, which is going to be uh, the last match of the competitive Hearthstone year, the last match uh, to finish off the 2023 Hearthstone World Champion uh, Championship. But before we get into that one, we're going to have to go to one last quick break. So don't go anywhere. The conclusion of the Hearthstone World Championship right after this. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hearthstone World Championship. It's that time. We've spent all year getting to this point and it is time for the finals. In just a short few games of Hearthstone, we will be crowning our 2023 World Champion. I'm Raven, of course joining me as you can see is Sotl. And uh, Sol, are you ready as we take a look at the bracket? <laughs> Thank it, you. Uh, I will start that again. Yep, yeah, go I again, more, my, my friend. Good start, good start. I am more than excited. <laughs> yeah, we're kicking things off as we mean to continue, of course. Um, <laughs> hey, look, we are doing something entirely different with a whole four box thing going on to fill the time while we had a break before Worlds. There's, a, there's all sorts of technical limitations going on. This is not my fault, okay? Uh, anyway. It's been a fantastic script, I think. You will, be, you will agree where we're seeing Pocket Train, of course, who has been the protagonist of the TV show Hearthstone during 2023, making it all the way through to finals. But I feel like there's one thing that's missing from Pocket Train's story. It's a little bit of adversity. Don't think he's faced enough because, yes, he had that disappointment where Gyu stopped him at the first point of the call when he made it to the final. 
in the second Masters Tour didn't quite make the cut and he had to come back and win the third. Yeah, sure. But it's all seemed a little bit too easy for him outside mm -hmm. of that, right? So what he needs is to go up against some sort of unkillable super boss. <laughs> And I think that's what we found here with CJ Kaka on the other side, because I don't know how you're supposed to make this person lose a series of Hearthstone based on what we have seen through this tournament so far. No, it has definitely been something, hasn't it? Not only the you know the shenanigans that went down yesterday, but again, I uh, Pocket mentioned it in his interview. We were talking about it beforehand as well. Um, is that? This matchup you can see now that happened before, CJ versus Meaty. Meaty has Pocket Train's lineup. They're the same decks, yet CJ on, on paper should not have won that, right? Is that fair to say in terms of just pure matchups into matchups? So, um, it, CJ has been doing some incredible things, and I think it really shows the, uh, the difference of the sort of uncontrollable wild card that CJ has seemingly turned into going up against the sort of uh, consistently strong pocket train. I do agree. I think it is going to be quite the final. And as we take a look at this Rainbow Mage Soul, I think there's one important factor that could really uh, just finish off this year with quite the rarity. This World Championship predictions could be the most successful caster predictions that have ever happened in Hearthstone's history. Because what is that? <laughs> Four of us that have predicted Pocket to win Worlds and there's a there's a pretty good chance he will? That's good. That's that's pretty crazy. Do you know what else I want to throw out there, Raven? Mm -hmm. uh, World always. Championship Final. Eight decks. We're looking at the Mage right now, but there are eight decks in this final. None of them are Rogue. Ooh, that, ooh okay. That's a good one. I kind of didn't think about the whole class yeah. thing. And two yeah. of them are Paladin. <laughs> if you know, you know, by the way. I'm not even going to go yeah. all the way deep into that. But yeah, so we are looking at CJ Kaka's Rainbow Mage here. I chose to highlight this one because Mage is a deck that's been ubiquitous in the in top-level Hearthstone, high-legend Hearthstone, competitive Hearthstone, and really across the whole of Ladder and everywhere else for quite some time. So to see such a sparing amount of that Mage in this tournament has caught me a little bit by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and CJ Kaka being one of the ones that brought it, who is making it all the way through to the finals, um, I think is a super interesting little wrinkle in this. And yes, the Rainbow Mage, I think, is actually one of the decks that is somewhat well positioned to pick up a win here or there in this tournament, because as you... Uh, sorry, in this matchup, because as you said, um, CJ Kaka against this lineup, so against Meaty previously and now against Pocket Train, he's not supposed to win. Um, you said it, Pocket Train even said it himself after his semi-finals interview. But I think Pocket Train, even being so bold as to go and say that right before going to play a final, which a lot of people wouldn't dare to do, I think he was still underselling it. Like, CJ's lineup, not CJ the person, not CJ the player, but CJ's lineup is monumentally unfavoured in this series, mm. I would say. However, probably less unfavoured than you are when you discard your entire hand in the middle of a druid mirror. <laughs> and he still managed to win that somehow. So there hey. is no way you can possibly count this person out. Yep, just because the lineup's not great uh, doesn't mean it's not winnable. Uh, his opponent, of course, is going to be Pocket Train, a player I feel like we've just been speaking about all year. I think that's reasonably <laughs> fair to say because we can just have. Um, really, really, you know, top of the game right now in competitive Hearthstone. We know this. We, it's what we've been talking about for so long. And the fact that he has made it all the way to the finals is uh, just truly impressive. And he's definitely one of, if not the standout player of the year at least for me um and like we've just talked about but on, on the other side of things where things are going his way right not only <laughs> not only is sorry that threw me off there for a second um not only is his lineup seemingly you know quite strong i think especially this priest i, I think me, me and tj talked about this earlier i think we spoke about this yesterday but i do feel like the priest i don't know feels like the x factor deck of the tournament for me um, and, and I think all the pocket has to do now is just focus, rel try and relax, even though that's <laughs> impossible, and just get the job done. Because he said to me earlier this morning when I asked him how he was doing, he was like, well, I've not really slept much, but I, I'm just hoping the adrenaline gets me through this. And well, he's got, what, an hour or so left, let's say roughly, to be able to get the job done and for the adrenaline to carry. So everything on the line for both of these players because 
even though getting to top, getting to Worlds, getting to top four, getting second place, they're all incredible feats. But without sounding harsh, none of them matter compared to winning the World Championship. Yeah, I mean, right, like, name every Hearthstone World Champion in order. We can both do that in our sleep. Name every runner-up. Like, we'll both probably get there because it's our job and we're supposed to. But, like, to the average member of the public, no one is remembering second place coming into this. But I fully agree. And I think it's a really interesting point you make there about channel the nerves, channel the anxiety a little bit. Because watching Pocket play in these really um, crucial moments, he does remind me a lot of myself in similar situations. Like... I have, uh, like, I've had stage fright and performance anxiety throughout, like, my entire life and spent most of it performing on stage in front of people, which is a really weird combination of things to do, like, competitive yo-yoing, multiple different competitive games, even, like, just casting in front of live audiences, right? And you have to learn that if you are that kind of person that does get that sort of stage fright, performance anxiety, heightened anxiety, intense situations, it's never going to go away. So you just have to learn to channel it. That's the key, right? It's like you have to learn to be comfortable with that feeling when it comes on and understand how to channel that in the right direction. And that, to me, seems like where Pocket Train's at. Because I think you can right. see in his body, and his body language, and his mannerisms, even in that short interview when he was on camera with, uh, with TJ and Lorinda after the game, like, clearly he was pretty wired at that point in time, it, right? So um, yeah. I think that is going to be very, very key. If this was an anime, like energy would be crackling from his body at that point, oh, yes. I think. Yeah, yeah. So, well, without further ado, we're a couple of turns in, but this is the first game of the finals of the World Championship. Pocket Train on the bottom on the Demon Hunter, getting off oh. to a fairly quick start with the help of a Wayward Sage. CJ Kaka going to be on that mage we went in depth with just a little bit earlier on. So subtle, uh, especially after this opening. What does CJ Kaka have to do? Is getting over the first hurdle of this push enough based on this hand from Pocket? I mean, it of course depends as to uh, how soon the sharpshooter will join the party, but certainly this is an aggressive enough start that you're at least putting the check on your opponent to have cold case or to have uh, creation on, on curve, right? To be able to put something up that, that resists this board going back the yeah. other way because Pocket has gone extremely high pressure and extremely high tempo with the opening. Kaka does have the cold case though, which will be uh, very bad news for Pocket Train. Yeah, it is going to use the coin and there's no you know, glowing follow-up here um, after this, but as you mentioned, just the cold case in itself is about as big a hurdle as can possibly be managed at this point. Wayward Sage, nothing too crazy. Is um, is Pocket really just looking for a sigil? Is that the kind of best draw he's looking at right now, as this game seems to be speeding by? Yep, Sigil or just uh, straight up Sharpshooter off the top at this point. You sure. see, holding on to the Sage does not just want to waste the Sage, which is one of the most powerful combo cards available in the deck. Uh, on a Momentum, which is a card that can end up being cast for zero as well as soon as the game starts going well. So just holding on to that Sage for a little bit of greed, if at all possible. Yeah, CJ able to pick up some uh, a little bit more cheap removal, which is useful. These are... Uh, oof. Ooh. These Demon Hunter minions are not the, the most durable, let's say, in general. They're all uh, pretty pretty killable, even from the small tools. So, Pocket is going to play one of the Sages. Obviously, just give CJ something to remove. Flame Geyser is going to be able to clean this up no problem. But still, there's, Pocket has time. Even though this isn't looking great, there's still a few turns, right, at least. There's nothing, uh, nothing too crazy that's really going to come out from CJ. Yes, there's the... Um, the creation but it's not like the game will end for pocket in the next turn or so oh cj light it burns more cheap removal it's really nice pickup honestly just just if pocket is stuck on this player thing hero power pass player thing hero power pass <laughs> yeah light it burns is, is about as good as it's gonna get honestly oh yeah that's nice well Obviously, the issue with oh <laughs> never mind. The issue with Light It Burns <laughs> is that you can't use it to answer a sharpshooter, which obviously is the premium target that you have to have uh, when going up against these decks. Oh. But 
it's still fantastic removal against most things. And he does have the creation in hand to be able to clear this <laughs> up. But Zero Mana dispose off the top is so oh unbelievably my. <laughs> perfect. Any other spell in the deck, I'm and not sure how many others were remaining oh. at that point. But oh my god, have you seen this script? It is a doozy. Did you see? Like, we're looking at Pocket now, but I ask everyone to just, you know, rewind, go watch the VOD, whatever it takes, to just look at CJ's face on that last, like, sort of turn and a half or so, right? Just, the, you know, the, the raised eyebrows, the, the wait, what, whoa, 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 they're still playing things? Wait, what? Because, again, Dispose, what, the only card, I think? Oh, and the other, um, uh... I forgot the name of the card now. The other plus attack card. Is that the only momentum. things that he could have drawn? Yeah, yeah momentum, sorry, yeah. Uh, the only things that he could have drawn to, you know, keep that chain going just enough for that little bit extra. But, wow, that was just on the edge of Pocket Train not being able to hold on there and not be able to put enough damage in because CJ was a turn or so of just not taking a million damage away from saying, well, yeah, Pocket, you're top decking. And again, unless it's sort of chain draw, you've got nothing. And... Just a sharpshooter with the bare minimum stacked up enough damage to catch up. Because what was it, about 15 health when it started? And it had to take a 7 attack at the end. So it's like so much damage from that sharpshooter. Really yep, crazy I game think one. if they had, obviously, momentum was in the hand. Part of the reason why the, the mid-game the mid game of that incredibly short game was yeah. uh, slightly irritating from pocket is because that momentum was stuck far left of the hand the entire game but if it, there wasn't a momentum and a dispose played on that turn um, then I was just talking about it creation was in hand right for Kaka so he just clears the whole board no big deal whatsoever still has six nine health left to play mm -hmm. with which might as well be a million in that position when the demon hunter is is top decking one one card at a time so it's a pretty pretty important draw for pocket he found the sharpshooter within the first ten cards of the deck which I think if you end up doing that with Naga demon hunter you're in a pretty good place in most right. matchups overall um, but yeah, Pocket went for that super heavy, aggressive opener, was met with the cold case. I don't mind the threat check though, right? Because that game could have been over. If Kaka didn't go coin cold case exactly in that spot, he just kind of died to the minions that Pocket had played in the early game. So right. that was threat check number one. And you just have to have that faith sometimes when you're playing a deck like this. Of like, the deck is built well. It's built as consistently as it possibly can. Me and Meaty have made good choices to make the deck a little bit more consistent overall in terms of little tweaks. Just trust the deck. Play properly, trust the deck. Play properly, trust the deck. And eventually... Uh, the numbers will average out on your side if you are doing that every single game. But when it comes to a small sample of, well, it has to happen now in this one game because this one game right. is the freaking world championship. That's when it can become a little bit difficult to keep the faith. But Pocket, I think, executed very, very well there. Yeah, uh, really good one. Because that, as, as I think we touched on just before we got going with the, the first game, that was one of the trickier matchups on paper, right? Is uh, the, the mage versus the demon. Because some of the, um, the the things you mentioned about not only cold case, but just the fact that the sheer volume of removal sort of makes the demon hunter have to combo <clears throat> the mage in general to be able to push the damage or the sustain yep. just ends up being there from the mage's side. He... So that was one where CJ could have just yoinked a quick win and started to gain some momentum himself in the series and even then the mage can find counterplay right because you can discover solid alibis you can yes, get freeze yep. effects for example so that the the face attack can't go yeah artificer can stack massive amounts of armor not to mention if you just get keyboard early in the game like the board that you build is <laughs> yeah. monstrous before yeah. they even get to the point of playing sharpshooter so yeah i think Kaka will be, uh, he would have felt bad going into the series, I think, lineup wise. I think having lost that particular matchup, he might be uh, suffering even harder. But now, Raven, we're on to the real deck of champions. Oh, yeah. The Naga Priest. It's really funny because over the many years Ooh! we've been casting uh, and you're playing Hearthstone, there's not that many times where we both vibe with the same deck. I do feel yeah, like yeah. we are different sides of the, of the same coin in terms of meta and such. But this one deck, we're both just like, it's just good and it's just fun. And then um, yep. you've seen some of the power plays coming out here. Um, Pocket already piling on the pressure, making CJ have some kind of answer here. And it's just going to be a few imps, which honestly, depending on what was in hand, could have ended up helping Pocket and be able to just farm some heals here. <laughs> I want to talk about the play that Pocket made, though, where he went um, 
priestess just to refresh one um, and then drop the dream boat just to get an extra one one on the dream on the dream boat part of the reason why i like this deck so much is i've been playing it pretty consistently for the last two days like in all of my breaks and worlds i've been watching and playing this deck um and then i tested it once the lineups come came out because it wasn't something um, that i tested extensively um naga priest as soon as i saw everyone else's lineup i was like oh okay that's what was missing from my lineup is actually believing donkey that naga priest was absolutely the nuts because yes it is but like every 10 games or so i play i feel like i'm doing turns and i'm like okay 10 games ago i would have played this turn a lot lot worse and that's right. one of the things that i discovered fairly early on as like if you have felice in hand and you can use it to do something in the early game um you should do it a lot of the time in a lot of matchups because you can snowball so heavily just as long as you stick some sort of base of a minion early on in the game. It's very similar to Mech Rogue in that regard, right? Where you never want to be blitzed off board completely. You always want something hanging around on board as an activator for your wigs, for your funnel cakes, for power called synchronize, all of this stuff yeah. that you have available to you, right? And look at this pocket again, just continuing to build on the board. It's going to get a little bit of extra draw with the funnel cake there and with the second clergy in hand. It is going to be uh, going to start stacking some of this draw as well. Cathedral also available for this turn. Mind is a pretty solid pickup, honestly. And this is the frustration, isn't it, for, for CJ, I imagine, where the, this damage is actually potentially just more annoying, right? Like the damage from the skeletons hitting the minions is like, oh, they get to utilize this. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, pa Mindseer was the perfect draw because you needed some way to spend one mana before, like, you had the you had Priest and Heal, right? You were always going to do that, but that only spends two mana and it refreshes right. three. So you wanted something else to spend one mana on first. Second Cathedral coming out for Pocket means he will have at least options for very solid card draw for what... I'm not going to say what will be the rest of the game because we've seen how long <laughs> these Priest games can actually go with Amonthor, uh, but... In general, uh, the plan will be here to then start to stack this card draw and really pile on the pressure because right now, there's a whole lot of nothing coming out from this mage side. A colossal stack of nothing, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen so much nothing in all my life. But there is a lot of value, so as long as Pocket doesn't end the game in the next, what, turn? <laughs> There's worlds, right, with double wisdom in the hand there for CJ being able to draw a ton of cards. Maybe there's a hope that he holds on, but the Pelagos plus multiple buffs coming out if he wants them. Okay, I'm just going to go for the one. Is a lot of damage. Effectively setting up two turn lethal. Yeah, and I think crucially here, six health minion and a seven health minion has not seen a creation yet. But you can see from the wisdoms costing one. Uh, that uh, four schools have been played, so he needs to get minions above that five health total. So drops the Pelagos down with six, gets the Dreamboat up to seven, which means even if this is card draw into creation, he still has those two huge minions to uh, threaten lethal with. And yes, Pelagos right now is a one attack minion, but if it lives, it's a huge minion. It right. doesn't matter what size you put and it to after the fact. Yeah, and, and CJ has this knowledge, right? He knows as a wig there, he as a 100% mm -hmm. fact. So he has to factor this in. He does have a, a reverb in hand, but it's going to need a lot. And you can see Pocket just praying, like, just, just let this go. Creation comes out, but there's still, what, seven, eight damage. There's going to be the Cathedral as well. That's lethal, right? You can just mind seer your own minion. Doesn't that do the remainder you need? Yeah, it's just lethal with the cards in hand. You just heal the Pelagos, Serpent Wig the Pelagos, Mind Seer your own minion. I mean, uh, what? 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 Wait. <laughs> still work? Okay, this still works. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. You can just do it on the Oh, Pelagos yeah, with the Mind Seer. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. No, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's fine. Oh, yes, yes, I yes. It does his own minion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. That was so... I, I feel in my head that's a, such a more complicated way of doing it. No, no, no. Okay, no. No, 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 no. That is the correct way of doing it. Because if you did it the other way, the Pelagos effect kicks in as you try and shoot your 7-2. And then it sets the health to 7, which is the larger of the two. Because it actually works the other way around as well. Right? So it wouldn't have actually worked in that scenario, okay. I think, if you'd done it the other way around. So Pocket actually <sighs> catching on and doing it the correct way in the end. Really, really good stuff from Pocket. Well, either way... All that matters is just... Uh, this might be a pretty fast one, Sol, but just like that, 
Pocket Train is leading 2-0 in the finals of the World Championship. And you can see he, he's, he's probably, I can just imagine, it's that line and he's right on the line of hyped. He's 2-0 up. That's incredible, especially a player that good, right? That feels like he's so favored to win the series. But on the other side, he must just be thinking, it's, well, it's not over till it's over, right? You haven't won until the match is over and done and you have that trophy. So I can only imagine what Pocket Train's going through right now. And the same can be said for CJ Sol because having this start of a fairly rapid getting 2 0 would so far is not how you want it to go on his end. No, but um, reminder that this is a repeat matchup from earlier in the tournament, and this is largely how it went in that original matchup between the two of them. So, uh, Pocket, just to show you, you know, I made this point at the start. I think, you know, people keep saying, oh, he's really favored. But honestly, like, he is overwhelmingly favored lineup wise. And if we do get to talk to him afterwards, um, it will be one of the first topics we have of, like, I really want to dig de dig deep into his preparation for this tournament because him and Meaty have managed to come in with such a lineup advantage over the rest of the field is mm -hmm. the way that I view it. That that really has to be the big talking point of how they got there, what their preparation looked like. But um, just because you are overwhelmingly favoured going in does not mean that things are a formality. Like, yes, you're favoured on paper. But Hearthstone is not played on paper. Hearthstone is played online through the intertubes, which is <laughs> entirely stuff. different. Yeah. Um, I will say as well, one thing I've noticed a lot about Pocket is hydration is a key factor. I feel like every time we see him you know, on, on big camera, let's say, it's like, this thing of water, whatever that drink was, you know, constantly uh, keeping hydrated, which I've heard uh, helps a lot uh, with focus. So we'll see after if it pays off. Um, here we are going to be getting into what could be the final game of this series and of the World Championship. Pocket Train on the two of full dragon druid there's the water again uh and cj gonna be sticking <laughs> to the mage and you can hear sottle's weird ooh noises in the background and that is because this is called a good opening from pocket this is called being a 70 percent win rate gamer raven that's what this is being oh there oh, oh, oh it just went up it's going up <laughs> it's now 71 <laughs> Welp into Welp is probably the one thing CJ would not want to see. If he it's could the pick one, one thing, thing we didn't want to happen. <laughs> yeah. If he could pick one thing one opening that Pocket wouldn't have in this matchup, it would be this opening. Oh. It's not even Welp into Welp, it's Welp into Nest Matron plus yeah. second Welp. Like it's so disgusting. Or just another four drop dragon. <laughs> like why not? Yeah, he might tempo, honestly. Yeah, because like, that's I, a lot of tempo. Absolutely would not yeah. hate the tempo. Yeah, I like it. Because then there's Snapdragon Welp next turn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curve which doesn't which make seems sense. fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this one extra attack over dealing with a 1-3. I think that's absolutely fine. You open yourself up to reverb, but I don't think you're upset if your opponent's turn is reverb here, so I think this is fine. Okay. You also opened yourself up to lay down the law, apparently, but I don't <laughs> think that's something you're ever supposed to play around. Yeah, CJ, again, no doubt, like, not happy with the, what he's seeing right now, but is fighting for it, right? Is managing to yep. hold on to an extent. But the Snapdragon and the second whelp, it is just putting Pocket so far ahead. The one thing I will say is if Pocket doesn't get hold of any generation card draw you know anything along those lines then he th there's a world where cj cj just holds him off and then just overwhelms him because we've seen dragon druid just run a little bit dry on the card draw scenario yeah yeah for sure great pickup off the void scripture finding the objection does look like uh, i think we got cj did ha or does have should i say objection up Yes. Oh, what was I saying about running a bit dry on cards, so? 
Oh my. Just rips it, gets the excellent news that it's not mm. counterspell. So, but now he, under, he is in a bit of a sticky spot because if he plays this and it's objection, okay, yes it is. Well, great, now I get to play Dragon Golem next turn. But you know you don't, right? Because you know that that came from Void Scripture, so you know there's a second one in the hand now, which is going to be very, very mm. problematic and slow you down significantly. Kaka is doing a great job of stalling this one out. Yeah, does have Amber Whelp into Spine Tail if he wants to commit that much, you know, to get through the objection. Yeah, you got to do it, right? What's well, interesting just... is... Mm. Yeah, He's debating it... using the Spine Tail, which I do actually respect, just because of the uh, the Amber Whelp's ability to uh, be more flexible in terms of face damage as well. Well, that's the interesting part, right? Because on one hand, you think, oh, the, the Dragon Golem's getting worse, mm -hmm. but you need to play something to open it up. And also... We can see two creations in hand still for yep. CJ, so this Which is could... why I think it's why Pocket's like having the backup plan of face damage, right? Where he's saying, right. okay, if Kaka has creation in hand, probably not gonna creation this board because they'll wanna save the creation for my Dragon Golem, which I probably have at this point, especially having drawn dragons. Um, so if they're going to have that creation and commit it to my Dragon Golem board, well, I can just hit them with my 6-5 and then just burst them down with Alexstrasza and, and any other damage that I can put together. You know, I think that's a pretty smart way of doing it. Yeah. Uh... Brilliant. I'm assuming this has to be an arcane bolt, right? You can't just take it. Gotta six. be an arcane bolt. Yeah, you, surely, yeah. There we go. Okay. Well, there are the creations. There's the snake oil in hand as well for some level of cycle. Ooh, oh, okay. A death wing? Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, okay. CJ it wasn't just... even really the death wing. It's just that he managed to draw two dragons off yeah, his one yeah, draw yeah. for his dragon golem, which well, is kind of absurd. Well, I, I was also just thinking of like, well, Alex Straza, if that doesn't finish them, well, just slam a 12 12, right? That's going to be pretty difficult to deal with. No, those aren't cards. Not only are they not cards, oh, they're not even bucket. cards that are cheap enough. They're not even cards that are cheap enough to play with the creation. Oh, they're just not this cards. It? Is there anything he can draw? There's a snake oil, a tradable. But I mean, six, if, six health soul is a lot. Yeah, if he like he if anything he trades into it can't discover Blizzard. He could like trade into Infinitize for a solid alibi, which then buys you a turn. No, that's not it. This could be the moment. It looks like CJ has a whole lot of nothing to do here. And we might be just moments away. Pocket Train knows it. A ton of dragons on board, threatening a ton of damage. And there is nothing I can see that CJ Kaka can do about it. And with a bit of a shake of the head and a smile, I think he knows it as well. Going to be mere moments away from Pocket Train. Not only winning this game, but winning this match and also becoming your 2023 Hearthstone World Champion. Just like that, Sol, it's over. He does it once again. Another 3-0 for Pocket Train, and that is it. Raven, I... What? No, it's too soon. <laughs> Can we play another hour of Hearthstone, please? Like, it was, this was supposed to be an epic. Go again. <laughs> oh, my good. Pocket Train, oh. absolutely decimating everything put before him. The only thing that could put up a fight against him in this entire tournament was the lineup that he himself had a hand in creating when he went up against Meaty, and even then, <laughs> his superiority was shown. Oh. But honestly, what words can I possibly add to this that say more than that <laughs> reaction do right there? You don't even need to see him on screen to know how he's feeling. What a hey. journey this has been through 2023 for Pocket Train and the most deserving of Hearthstone World Champions. Honestly, just seeing his reaction, because we've seen it time and time again. He's been on camera enough this year. We've seen what he feels like when he wins, when that final moment kicks in of the hard work paying off. And 
there's nothing more than this one moment for him because not only is it you know the excitement i imagine of just you know becoming the world champion but i also can imagine the relief as well of just thinking all the work was worth it it paid off it's done he is the hearthstone world champion and what a way to not only end that match but end the day and end the year subtle because pocket train simply dominated i don't think there's any other real way to say it no sometimes right like the way hearthstone works if you're going to win major tournaments you're going to have the best of one to two of three things right you're either going to be the best player you're going to have the best lineup or you're going to get the luckiest throughout the tournament right like two of those three things will normally line up mm -hmm. you could argue that in this tournament pockets had all three of them <laughs> he is probably the best player in the tournament he absolutely has the best lineup but he's also run hot right like i think he absolutely could have dominated this tournament um with some three twos and three ones here and there but honestly the name just seemed written in the stars to an extent and it has done for quite some time to this point like this is a person that we've seen their journey they've sort of pocket streamed and then he's not streamed and then he's been okay i need to I, i'm going to stream to keep me sane i'm enjoying hearthstone okay i need to not stream so i can focus on getting this rank one finish that i need okay i've got that now i need to focus on the masters tour now i'm going through this period of like feeling very jaded about the fact that i've been playing 16 hours of hearthstone a day <laughs> every single day for the entire year you know this journey has been very well documented but at this point right now in this moment he will probably tell you that it's been worth it yeah just a huge congratulations to pocket train like i said we've followed him all year we've seen the performance we've seen the hard work obviously not only from him but from all of the players who have made it to worlds this year was incredibly difficult so you know just again before we continue talking about pocket for the rest of the show just a shout out to all the players who made it and all the players who got close as well because competing at this level basically all year for the majority of those players was incredibly hard time consuming and just so difficult so a huge shout out to all of those but as i said we're gonna get back and talk not only about but also to pocket as i believe he is ready to join us for his winners interview pocket are you there and can you hear me i can hear you very well can you hear me yeah, we can hear you. First off, just huge stuff. congratulations. We could see it as soon as the, uh, the the match ended. And obviously, you know, you were on camera. We could see the emotion. So before we get into all the decks and plays and all the, those sorts of questions, just do you want to just tell us how it feels after a year of, of hard work to be the Hearthstone 2023 world champion? I'm 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 scared to go to sleep because I'll wake up and it won't be real. It's um I've I've played so much Hearthstone this year, thought so much about worlds. I've I've had every dream about worlds. I've had vivid <laughs> vivid dreams like play by play losing like going 02, play by play winning and then I wake up the next day and none of it was real. Um so so this one this one is 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 crazy right now. Uh, I I I, I I don't know. I'm a bit of a mess right now, but br brilliant, a brilliant <laughs> mess. Um... <laughs> well, I hope it's not a dream because that means we're just figments of your imagination, which would uh, yeah, that, would suck a little bit. That would be awkward. E yeah, even in be... your dreamscape, you did you imagine anything? <laughs> okay, that is a good point. Even in your dreamscape, though, did you imagine anything as wild as that CJ Kaka versus Wii Q game that we saw? <laughs> no, that was crazy. I I thought I thought he was I. I yeah, I thought um, it was over. We queued one, and then, like, I, I I don't know. It just kept going, kept going, kept going. Everyone's <laughs> saying it's over, it's over, it's done. Uh, I was too tired because I just played, and I not a, not a clue what was going on. Like, I was too tired to see who was doing what, and it, it, the game just never ended. And then, uh, yeah, from that point, I thought, okay, well. CJ, CJ has got something. He's uh, when I saw it, it was me against him in the final. Like I, I, I knew, I, I knew that this was the guy. This, this, this was the guy that, was... that could have the have the storyline. Yeah, yeah. There's a slight fear that you might have finally met someone with greater plot armor than you, right? In this in this year's tournament, oh, yeah. like that. You... It might turn out you're not the protagonist after all. Um, yeah. But despite what Raven said, I do want to talk to you about your lineup because you can go ahead and disagree with me here if you want. 
I think that's the number one factor of why you are here right now as a champion. Like, your lineup just seemed above and beyond everyone else to me. So yep. I think it would be important for the viewers to understand exactly what goes into making a lineup for a tournament like this. And it's not just picking some decks that you like that are good and putting them together. Like, how did you and Meaty end up where you ended up? What were some of the mistakes that you avoided? And why do you think everyone else's lineups were so strange as well? Because I think some of them really were. It was odd, yeah. So I, I want to throw Rekvam in there as well. Like, he didn't bring the lineup because he sure. didn't think yeah. it was good in his group, mm -hmm. but he did a lot of the heavy lifting. A lot of it. Like, he was responsible for Pelagos. He was responsible for going down swinging. He was responsible for sort of Naga Priest on the whole. Um, and um, he just thought he couldn't bring it into his group. He was scared you would bring control or, yeah, stuff like that. Um, but we were thinking specifically, like, in our group, we queued loved um, Naga Demon Hunter. So we thought, okay, what's good against Naga, Naga Demon Hunter? We've got Paladin. Everyone's got to bring Paladin, unless there's a lineup that no one seemed to find that could target it. So so we just hit the bullet and went, okay, if they figured it out, they win. Um, but no one figured it out because it can't be done, I think. Um, and then <laughs> Naga Demon Hunter ourselves, we thought it was just too good to not bring. Like it beats the, it beats the slow decks like all of them and then it it doesn't have any miserable matchups apart from apart from the dragon druid which we brought and then um uh the priest the pre yeah the priest was the um like the secret deck sort of but we did think at least someone was going to be on it apart from apart from yeah. us we we thought there were going to be a couple more in the tournament because it's got great 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 stats um but just not that tested but every time we tested it we just went okay this deck is real this deck is ridiculous and yeah, it just beats everything that doesn't run heavy removal. So like a control lineup with like the warrior, Rec Van Brought, that would have been awful for me. I would have had to ban that if I played against him, which is ridiculous. Um, and we were scared of something like a control priest, but unlikely. Um, or something... Yeah, that, there's not really anything else apart from that. So when you start listing the things that your lineup is scared of, and then there aren't many, and those few things are awful, <laughs> awful decks. I mean, Rekfam's Warrior is kind of good, but like it doesn't fit a lot of lineups. Um, but yeah, when the things you're weak to are awful decks that you don't think anyone will bring, then your lineup's probably quite sound. And then you've got good targets on stuff like Plague Death Knight, uh, Solid into Naga Demon Hunter. That was, yeah. Everyone else was basically ban Paladin, lose to Naga Demon Hunter, or ban Naga Demon Hunter, and lose to Paladin. Um, so we just went, okay, we'll ban one and we don't actually want to lose the, lose to the other one. So let's, let's make our lineup good against it. And then, <laughs> yeah, it worked out. Okay. Well, so I get, oh, go on. Oh, go on. Um, I was just gonna say like you had, we talked about preparation for this tournament, but obviously this has been a year long process at this point and you've sort of streamed and tweeted about and been very vocal about the process through and, you know, been through various breakdowns along the way and with all the stress and so on oh, that's well, happened, well. like, at this moment now, 21 minutes past nine, 17th of December, 2023, was it all worth it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd do it again. The moment I made Worlds, I went, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure I would do it again, like, having already done this. But if I could go back in time and do it again, if that makes sense, then, I, yeah, I would, I, would, I would, or tell myself, I wouldn't dissuade myself. But, yeah, I'm not sure I could do this more than once i don't have to anyway um, I, I, um <laughs> there's nothing more to do <laughs> um, okay well before yeah. we um we, we we let you go and not sleep by the sounds of it uh mm. just any any final words to your you know many many fans that you know we've obviously seen in the chat on twitter and so on uh, and anyone you want to thank you know anything else you want to say before we let you go I have a ridiculous amount of thank yous. So Rec Van Meaty, obviously, prep with me, um, incredible, incredible practice partners as as committed to it as me. We're like 24 seven, basically. Someone's always around to prep with. We had um, quite an extensive group this time. We had Pascoa coming back for, for helping with um, some stats work. We had Tic Tac, Wyra, Fury Hunter, Otsuna, Luna. Um, yeah, that was our core practice group, but I had a little word with McBanterface and Bunny Hopper as well. It's great to get advice from people who were already in Worlds. And um, also, a few years ago when I started, I, know, I, I don't want to like go on, but, but this is important to me. Um, so okay. when I started, I was kind of a no one. And then Jambre reached out to me and said, do you want to join our practice group for this Masters Tour? 
and like it was a bunch of big names i was scared i didn't join the voice calls or whatever i think no hands gamer was in there and stuff this was like three <laughs> notoriously years ago, scary no hands gamer <laughs> No, no, no. I was just like intimidated because it's people that I knew of who didn't know me. And then, mm. yeah, a few years later, that kind of blossomed into me knowing people. And it went from there. So Jamboree, I have so much thanks for because, yeah, I, I wouldn't have known people and I wouldn't have been able to build a network without him doing that in the first place. And um, the main one, my parents, it's ridiculous how much they've supported me playing playing a, playing a card game just like for a living. And my mum... My in particular, she watches all of my matches, doesn't have a clue what's going on, but she watches all of them. Um, it's, it, it, yeah, she's always like, I, I've had to, I had to update her before because she's, uh, yeah, she, she wants updates because it's too stressful, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's been incredibly supportive throughout and it's, yeah, it's just been brilliant um, having that kind of support let me do this. Um, yeah, that, that, those are the main ones. <laughs> Okay, well, again, we'll just a huge congratulations. Well deserved. A fantastic run in this tournament. And we will let you go and either wind down or stay up all night and celebrate whatever you want to do. You've earned it. We'll Thanks, see. Pocket Training. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much. And there it is the world champion for 2023, Pocket Train. What a tournament! What a set of matches and just what a performance, Subtle. Yeah, I mean, what more is there to be said at this point? I guess thank you to Pocket for not starting crying during the interview because he probably would have set me off. I haven't cried on camera since uh, Lion. I'd like to keep that streak going, I think, for a while still. Um, I, oh, what a player, what a guy. I mean, he, he's, he's laid his, his everything out. He's all been visible. He's worn his heart on his sleeve from, from day one this year. And I think... You can see just with how wholesome and heartfelt all of that was, you know, even saying, oh, sorry, I'm going on. Like, no, you know, what do you think this is? The Game Awards. We're not going to play you off because you're taking too long. Don't worry. You've got all yeah. the time in the world, mate. You like, literally he... cannot hold up a sign he will see to tell him to yeah. be quiet and go. So it's fine. <laughs> um, and, you know, the world champion, yes, is it's um, it's a mark of the, the best player in the world and it's a prestige, right? But it's also an ambassador and a representative for the game and by that degree like yes pocket is arguably the best player in the world and so having him have the title of world championship for that world champion for that is very fitting but also it's someone that you want to hold up that people can aspire to that other competitive players can look up to that can be a, a role model and a source of inspiration in the community and i think pocket fills that as much as anyone else does that i can think of in hearthstone so for that, congratulations to Pocket Train as well. Yeah, couldn't agree more. But just like that, the competitive Hearthstone year is over. So, you know, as is often the case, I'd like to throw a few thank yous out there myself. Huge thank you to everyone in production who's helped make this show happen this year. Thank you to all of my fellow casters, Sol, Dragon Rider, Idolvice, Lorinda, TJ. And uh, thank you to all the players and all you viewers that have hopefully enjoyed the show we've put on this year. And also a special extra thank you to Pocket Train's amazingly supportive parents. <laughs> uh, keep, keep doing the good work. But thanks a lot for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time. <laughs>